Tip and Billa, part of the Parks, Conservation and Lands Agency, is playing an active conservation role with the Southern Brushtail Rock Wallaby Program. Part of the program involves us breeding rock wallabies as well as uh, hardening them off for release and using new and modern reproductive biology techniques to try and help us accelerate the breeding of this critically endangered species. In the early 1900s, around about 1.2 million rock wallabies were estimated to be shot for the fur trade and that's one of the main significant reasons why this particular animal has now become critically endangered. Tidbin Miller is one of the recovery team program members and plays an important and significant role in the collaborative program to try and save this particular species from extinction. Currently at Tidbin Villa we have 19 captive southern brushtail rock wallabies and this represents a significant uh, number in terms of the entire captive population. And there's around about 35 individuals distributed throughout a number of different wildlife agencies and Australian zoo partners and uh, Tidbin Villa has been doing very well with the breeding program. In fact we have successfully bred nine southern brushtail rock wallabies in 2009 as well as some of those individuals being cross-fostered. The cross-fostering program is a way that we actually accelerate the breeding and it's basically using a foster mother wallaby and uh, the foster mother wallaby helps us to actually raise the critically endangered joey and allows the uh, breeding female to actually uh, potentially have eight joeys in one year. So uh, in terms of trying to breed this critically endangered animals, we use the cross fostering program to help us try and breed animals uh, more quickly and that enables us to release animals back to the wild. In the last couple of years, Tidbin Villa has supplied a number of animals for release back to the wild, including sending a number of animals, totalling 15, which have been sent back to the Grampians National Park. These animals have been uh, radio tracked and uh, their well-being is being recorded by field workers out there. And Tidbin Villa is continuing to breed animals here for release back to the wild. My name's David Schultz and I'm a veterinarian and have been a veterinarian at the Adelaide Zoological Gardens for oh, close on 25, 26 years now. 10, 12 years ago now we became involved in trying to do something about the imminent demise of the brush-tailed rock wallaby and the system that we were going to try and build the population up quickly with was a system called cross-fostering. We have come a reasonable distance to the extent that now uh, we have Tidbin Villa Nature Reserve as being probably the, the uh, main player in all of the recovery of the brush tail rock wallaby because of the facilities here they're excellent and there's a large by far the most in captivity here and there's a variety of areas that they can be put from close confinement where we need animals to be able to be caught easily to hardening off areas where animals that are due to be released in the wild can go out into a tougher environment. They have to look for their tucker, they have to jump up onto rocks and trees and whatnot, get fitter and be conditioned for a release in the wild. Some animals are really good. Uh, we've had a couple of females give six or seven young a year and if every female did that we would be probably progressing faster but this is the way it is. We have progressed, we are growing the population probably at least double a natural way and we have been able to release animals to the wild. Today we're actually showing Amy and Lucas uh, what we do on the captive side of things. Amy and Lucas are the people that are the, what we call the field management team. These are the guys that walk vertical cliffs, put their lives <laughs> at risk and probably have a great deal of fun doing it. But they are the fieldies. They do a lot of hard yakka up and down hills and, and whatnot, trapping the beasties in the wild just to be able to say, well, what is happening here? Uh, has, the, has the baiting program, is that yielding results yet? 
even if this fails, what it will tell the world is that an animal has gone into extinction. Do we want this to continue? If our efforts now aren't good enough, future efforts will be good enough to prevent many more beasties sliding into extinction.